Now that the injuries have been properly assessed and the deaths have appropriately and unfortunately been counted, we know the names and the different branches of the military that were affected by the suicide bomber that happened a couple days ago in Kabul, right outside the airport there, and for posterity's sake, and I think that it is important, we're going to go over all 13 men and women that were killed in that senseless attack that was yeah th this falls right on biden's plate man I, i've got no other sympathy remaining left for the guy okay he's responsible for all this stuff he might not want to take responsibility for it but at the end of the day he's the one making the calls on all this kind of stuff he's the one who just surrounds himself with a bunch of yes men he's the one who has a bunch of ineffectual generals who are more concerned with white rage than actually you know what dealing with the real rage the fucking brown rage that's happening right there on the fucking ground in afghanistan if you want to have a different plan if you want to go in all fucking gung-ho with your own oh look at my foreign experience look at all of my diplomacy that i've been successful with throughout the world can you provide any receipts for it oh uh, uh, well, uh, come on, man. What do I, I'll challenge you to a push-up contest? And it's like, just, just fuck off, Joe. I've got nothing left for you. So, let's do a little roll call here and give you a little bit of background on these people because they're all so fucking young, man. It, it's really sad. We're gonna take a look at the names. We're gonna t take a look at the ages, where these guys are from, and you know they've known nothing. They've known nothing, with one exception of a world before all of this stuff in Afghanistan has gone on. Like you got the first corporal from the Marine Corps, David L. Esposa, twenty-one years old or twenty years old rather, from Texas. He he has no concept of life before 9/11, before these senseless wars that happened in the Middle East. I think that they were stupid. They were founded on lies to begin with. They shifted the goalposts after Osama bin Laden was body bagged. We were told, okay, I have no reason to believe he wasn't, but we were never shown the body. We were never made any sort of confirmations out there. They were, if you guys remember, respectful to Islamic traditions and threw him into the fucking ocean, didn't photograph the body. I'm not going to go all conspiratorial and say that, oh yeah, Hitler, he's, uh, he made refuge in Argentina and lived out the rest of his days down there. And that was just a body double that was there in the, the fortress that they found. I was like, no, I'm not going to get that skeptical. But for somebody who caused that much suffering, who killed almost 3,000 people in one fucking day, we should have confirmation on that, huh? And we're going to get to a little bit more sketchy shit that happened here in a moment. But yeah, we'll do the roll call here. So David L. Esposa, uh, Lan er, Marine Corps Lance Corporal David L. Esposa, a Marine from Laredo, Texas, joined the military after high school and was remembered as a hero by his mother. Oh, God. Esposa's uh, death was confirmed earlier by Representative Hel er, Henry Couliar, Republican from Texas. Wasn't he a Democrat? He was the one who was down there causing a whole bunch of ruckus at the border. Did he flip? No, that's just a misprint. Okay, he, he's still a Democrat. I remembered that correctly. Uh, the D Congressman Press Secretary, uh, Dana Youngentob, said Pentagon representatives visited Couliar's Washington office to inform him of Esposa's death. Couliar's office has also received an official death notice from the Pentagon. Oh, Jesus. Nicole L.G., 23 years old from California. Again, uh, somebody who doesn't even have any sort of memory of life before the terror attack. Marine Corps Sergeant uh, Nicole Gee is a native of Sacramento, California. In an Instagram account that apparently belongs to her, Gee posted a photo of August 5th, five days before the terrorist attack, showing her holding a baby. I love my job, she wrote. Yep. Darren T. Hoover, 31 years old, my age. And I have a little bit of a memory, and he would, would have been in, what, the fourth or fifth grade at the time? <laughs> Jesus. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Darren T. Hoover of Utah had been in the Marines for 11 years and was remembered as a hero who died serving others, his father Darren Hoover Sr. said. He's a hero. He gave his life protecting those who can't protect themselves, doing what he loved, serving his country, Darren Hoover Sr., who lives in Salt Lake City, a suburb. He was their man for so long, so long. Ryan C. Naus, 23 years old, from Tennessee, Army Staff Sergeant. Ryan C. Naus was remembered as a motivated man who loved his country and is looking forward to coming back to the United States and eventually moving to Washington, family members told WATE-TV in Knoxville, Tennessee. Super smart, hilarious young man, 23 years old, fuck's sakes. Hunter Lopez, 22 years old from California. Ugh. Biden, Biden, these are all on your hands. Dylan R. Merlola, or Merola, my mistake, 20 years old in California. Marine Corps Lance Corporal. Dylan R. Marola is a native of Rancho Cucamonga, California. 
Dylan loved doing stage setup and technical theater at Los Olmos, Osos High School in Rancho Cucamonga. And he's only 20 years old. Oh, another 20 year old from Wyoming. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley J. McCollum, a Marine and native of Boudrant, Wyoming, was married and his wife is expecting a baby in three weeks, his sister Cheyenne McCollum said. Our kid's gonna grow up with a without a father because Biden botched a fucking withdrawal to such a high level. Impeach this motherfucker right now, man. Ugh. Kareem M. Nakui, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui of Norco, California, sent videos to his family hours before he died, showing himself interacting with children in Afghanistan. In one clip, he asked a young boy to say hello, want to take a video together, buddy, Nakui said, leaning in to take a video of himself with the boy. All right, we're heroes now, man. The fuck, man. Dagan Page, 23 years old, from Nebraska, Marine Corps Corporal Dagan Page served in the 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Re Regiment, based at Camp Pendleton, California, and planned to go to trade school and possibly become a lineman after his enlistment ended, his family said in a statement. Oh, for fuck's sake. Are we almost done? This is so fucking depressing. But it is important. It is important. Johnny Rosario Pinchardo of Massachusetts, Marine Corps Sergeant uh, Johanny Rosa Pichardo, a native of Lawrence, Mass, graduated from Lawrence High School. He was one of the older guys on the list at 25 fucking years old. Jesus Christ. Humberto A. Sanchez, a Marine Corps Corporal from Logansport, Indiana, and a graduate of Log Logansport High School. Both Mayor Chris Martin and Logansport Community Corporation confirmed the news on Facebook. Our corporation mourns the loss of U.S. Marine. Humberto Sanchez, a graduate of Logansport High School, our deepest condolences with the Sanchez family and the entire Cass County community. Just two more. Unfortunately, two more. Jared M. Schmitz of Missouri, another 20-year-old, fuck's sakes. Marine Corps, a Lance Corporal. Jared M. Schmitz grew up in St. Louis area and was among a group of Marines sent back to Afghanistan to assist with evacuation efforts. Yep, direct correlation with Joe. Kid would be alright if he didn't fuck this up so bad. Maxton W. Sovak, uh, U.S. Navy hospitalman Maxton W. Sovak of Berlin Heights, Ohio, was a graduate of Edison High School. 22 years old, just fresh out of high school too. And there's no reason for those people to be dead. There's no reason for those previous thousands of people who lost their life for this fucking abortion effort that Biden has put out there to get people out of Afghanistan. And then now it's disrespectful because you guys remember he was saying, oh, we're going to go right back after ISIS. Apparently, U.S. airstrike killed two high-profile ISIS-K members in Afghanistan, said the Pentagon. Can't confirm who those high-profile targets were. Can't even confirm if it was two of them because initial reports said one and then maybe it was two. Oh, and they're high profile ISIS or ISIS K members, but what does that really mean in the grand scheme of things, huh? Well, Ben, let this shit happen. Al Qaeda's still out there, huh? ISIS K, okay, if you got high profile members there, we should probably know who those people are, right? No, but you don't know, and you aren't going to tell us. Pentagon confirmed on Saturday that two high-profile ISIS-K terrorist group members were killed in Afghanistan during the U.S.-led counterterrorism drone attack. Yesterday, U.S. military forces conducted the, oh, an over-the-horizon counterterrorism operation. Just fancy words for saying you went in there with a fucking drone and you just went pew-pew. Just glass it all. Get everybody out and just... Don't fucking care. Major General William Taylor said in an August 29th or 28th news conference, can't go into the future, uh, can confirm now that two high profile ISIS targets were killed and one was wounded. And we have zero civilian casualties. God bless, you got three of them. Still have 13 dead service women. Men and women, rather. Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby should be tendering his resignation, said during a the same brief that it was a single mission. Oh, yeah. Really strong fucking effort there to enact any sort of retaliation against, I against ISIS-K. Oh, it's a single mission. We got three people. Everybody stand up and clap. We're really taking responsibility for our shitty actions. Man, these motherfuckers. They lost the planner and they lost the facilitator and they've got one wounded. How about you release names? Actual specific information about these people. They got all your biometric information out there, huh? They got, what, 7,000 fucking scanners? They know exactly who to be going after. Oh, but we got a planner, a facilitator, and one wounded. Ooh. It's a good thing for the people of Afghanistan. Really? How? It's a good thing for our troops and our forces in that airfield, and I think it's just going to leave. Oh, and I'm just going to leave it at that. 
All of them. Fired. All of them. For as good as those fucking drones are, you might as well just take them and then just strap the fucking pink slips on all of them and fly them right into their fucking offices. But don't worry, they had to cut that press conference short in order to go up to Joe and say, oh yeah, it's highly likely that we're going to have another terrorist attack again. Like, is that a threat or a promise or trying to put something hopeful out there like everybody's been reading The Secret in the fucking White House lately they're just going to try to really think about something really hard and put it up on their fucking vision board? Suck a dick, you worthless cocksuckers. <sighs> President Joe Biden tried to prepare Afghan or Americans for another terrorist attack against U.S. forces in Afghanistan on Saturday. So what, we're going to have more names that are just never going to be avenged? They're never going to be properly commemorated? They're just going to be put up on a fucking wall? More dead kids on Joe Biden's watch. Wow, imagine that. But no mean tweets, right? The situation on the ground continues to be extremely dangerous, and the threat of a terrorist attack on the airport remains high. Biden wrote in a statement released by the White House. I'm sure he definitely wrote it. Was it in crayon? Was it on construction paper? Was there a little bit of spittle in the corner? Our commander informed me that an attack is highly likely within the next 24 to 36 hours. Oh, cool. Can you be more specific? I want to make sure that I have an appropriate timer so I don't miss it. Biden insisted that he told his generals to take every possible measure to protect American forces in Afghanistan. Dude, you ain't gonna do shit. You did one fucking drone strike. Woo! Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and strike back. We're gonna make sure that uh, none of those casualties were in vain. One fucking drone strike. Dude, you ain't gonna do shit about this either because, yeah, Taliban. Oh, yeah, uh, they still have all of that uh, access to the mainstream media. I think CNN and MSNBC are still trying to book some, uh, some of the Taliban spokespeople because they said, oh, yeah, we're gonna uh, definitely, as soon as the Americans leave, yeah, we're taking back that airport. So once you leave, there ain't no coming back. Worthless. Worthless 20 years. How many more people have to die? I guess we got to wait 24 to 36 hours to find out. So let's just take stock of what we found out over the past week. Biometric scanners. A kill list of all of the Americans and then the affiliated Afghans that are on the ground that are in the hands of the Taliban right now. 700,000 small arms, uh, 50,000 vehicles, like 90 aircrafts, how many hundreds of millions of dollars, control of every region more than they had in 2001 when they were originally kicked out. And then, yeah, the only place right now that's currently under control by the United States military is just going to get taken over as soon as they leave. Worthless. All of this was for naught. There was a way to go about this. They just completely fucked it up. And they're going to try to sweep it under the fucking rug. Don't you goddamn let them. They're just going to come in once everything gets evacuated in a couple of days. Oh, we got that drop dead date of August 31st. And then there are going to be no more questions about it. And it'll be the income and whatever fucking variant you want it to be. And just wear your mask, get the jab, more authority on that. You just see it, man. It's going to be a bait and switch like you ain't going to fucking see. But don't you dare let him forget this. There's 13 people here. There's 13 families that were affected. There's some kids that are going to grow up without their fathers. Ugh. All I can say is don't let them get up. Don't let them off the hook on this one. That's about the only serious topic we're going to be discussing here today because honestly, man, this shit is way too fucking heavy and we got to dunk on some dumb kids. So I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.